Greetings, travelers, and welcome to episode 40 of Westeros Craft Walks with your faithful host, Dutch Guard. In today's episode, we'll be taking a look at Standfast, the seat of House Osgrey in the Reach. Now, to some of you, that may sound familiar, and that may be because you've heard of or read through the novella The Sworn Sword, which is the second in the Duncan Egg Tales. Um, and the Tales of Duncan Egg are basically, for those of you that don't know, it's a series of books uh, which follows the adventures of the the knight Dunk and his squire Egg um, on their way to uh, to attorney at Ash Ashford, and it precedes A Song of Ice and Fire by about ninety years. So it's um it's a much simpler, much more down to earth kind of fantasy uh, tale uh, compared to A Song of Ice and Fire. Um, but it is a really cool companion uh, to the Song of Ice and Fire, as they do sort of reference each other here and that, here and then. Um, so I highly encourage you to read through those books if you haven't already. But um, that's where sort of Standfast comes from, and we know a lot about Standfast because of that book. Um, so I'll be talking to you a little bit about the lore and some of the history of House Osgrey and some of the things around um, the castle. Um, but I'll try not to spoil anything from the novellas because uh, I want people to read them. Anyway, so uh, you might be wondering where I've started. Um, I'm actually inside of a beaver dam, and... Um, I just thought it was really cool to show off the inside of a beaver dam. Um, I know people probably won't uh, find them on their own, but uh, there are several in the area, and you can actually go inside them. So let me just swim out of here. Oh, oh God, there we go. And um, right now we are in Leafy Lake, which is one of the locations described in the Sorn Sword. And it is a lake uh, in which the Checky Water feeds into. And the Checky Water is this stream, which we'll see in just a moment, which feeds into this lake. And it is a stream that is the cause of a dispute between the two houses, Osgrey and Weber, who are bordering each other. And is the main sort of driving conflict in the Sorn Sword. Um, and this lake eventually drains into Red Lake, which is a lake just next door, and uh, Red Lake is um, uh, also the name of a castle that sits on its shore and the seat of House Crane, but that is a build that I will show off in a later video, another really cool build, but um, here at Standfast we're sort of looking at the small detail, Standfast itself is nothing more than, um, it's described as a, a castle, but really just kind of a watchtower, so uh, let's head o over there, we'll be walking through a town there, and I'll show you some of the features along the way. Um, this area has been done up really nicely uh, to reflect the detail and the intimacy of uh, Duncan Egg and their story and uh, the novella Sword and Sword. We've got all these reeds here along Leafy Lake, which is really quite cool. So you can't even see the lake unless you get up to the shore. Um, you can see the waters there just in the distance. Um, so we can find the stream. It'll be around here somewhere. I can see a hut already in the distance, a lone home of perhaps some lumberjack or hunter there in the distance. Uh, right, so the Checky Water will be just here on the right here. And like I said, this is sort of the border between the uh, lands of House Osgrey and House Weber, who have been uh, fighting each other for a long, long time. Um, House Osgrey um, is one of the oldest houses uh, in the Reach and used to be incredibly prominent. It was established at least a thousand years before Aegon's conquest, um, and they used to be the Marshals of the North March under House Gardner, who of course were the uh, used to be the ruling kings of the Reach before the Tyrells and um, before the conquest. Um, that's the Checky Water just there, feeding into the leafy lake just in the distance. And um, we haven't built actually a cold moat, which is the seat of House Weber, but it will be just over this um, stream here in the distance. And eventually, I'll make a video on that one too. Um, but that um, that is sort of uh, the two major locations of the Soren Sword. And so, for fans of that book, um, this is definitely or will be a very cool area to explore um, uh, if you get the chance. Um, once we've finished. Um, but anyway, yes. Uh, moving along, here we've got this little road here, which will take us into the town outside of Standfast. They've got sort of two towns um, in the area. And uh, another important thing to know about the Osgrays is, is they used to be incredibly powerful. They, in fact, they used to possess four castles um, and used to have landed knights and their own uh, lesser lordlings, but eventually they made some poor decisions uh, <laughs> during some rebellions and during the conquest. Um, so they're sort of stripped of their lands, stripped of their power, and uh, they're not doing so well at the minute. In fact, all they have left is uh, Sir Eustace Osgrey, who is the reigning lord of Standfast, and uh, the last in his line of the Osgreys. Um, and, uh, yeah, so he's sort of lonely up in his castle, which we'll see just in a minute. Um, and, uh, yeah, so the, the, the Osgreys have sort of a, a long and sort of tragic tale behind them um, from being uh, one of the greatest families, you know, uh, counting themselves among the Florence and the Tarbex and the High Towers. Um, in fact, uh, they once uh, defeated an invasion into the Reach by the uh, Lannisters, or not by the Lannisters, um, 
by the, uh, oh, who was it before the Lannisters? Uh, the Cassilies, of course. Um, the Cassilies who, uh, who used to control the Westerlands, and they invaded the Reach. And uh, St Stanfast, which sort of sits very close to the border uh, with the Westerlands, um, repelled that attack. Uh, Sort of on a one by one, a one on one trial by combat. I think it was uh, some some Osgrey, Wilbert Osgrey, and then some King uh, King Castle or something uh, that invaded. Anyway, we've got uh, Standfast there in the distance. There you can see it's a little more than a tower. It's got these beautiful little turrets on there. These are all canon details that we've incorporated. Um, there's also this graphic novel for the Sword and Sword, uh, which has a really cool little um, artistic interpretation of Standfast. We've sort of borrowed some inspiration from that. So we've got these cool little turrets there. Um, you'll notice that the bottom of the tower is a little darker colored than the rest of the tower, and that's because um, the uh, tower was, at one point or another, was uh, partly ruined, so they had to rebuild it on top of the ruins, and so you've got the lighter, newer stone on top of this darker stone. We've got this very narrow path leading up to the tower as well, which of course is also some canon details that we've got from the uh, Soren Sword, and we've got these little stables here on our left, which are quite nice. Um, of course, for the, the horses of the knights here. Um, yes, yeah, so the Osgrays, who used to be Lords of the Reach, they are now nothing more than landed knights. Uh, they are sworn to Golden Grove, and, uh, which is quite odd, actually, because Golden Grove is, is on the other side um, of the Reach to uh, Standfast, and House Crane of Red Lake is very, very close by. I told you before, Leafy Lake was right next to Red Lake, um, so it really doesn't make any sense to me why they're sworn to a house on the opposite side of the Reach, but hey-ho, there you go. That's sort of what the, um, the canon information is telling us, so we'll just go with that. Um, right, so all we've got living in here right now is, uh, well, in our timeline, uh, is uh, Sir Eustace Osgrey, um, who is a sir and not a lord anymore, unfortunately. Um, oh, we've also got this little chicken coop over here. Yeah, so some more canon details. Stanfest is built on top of this little hill here. It's got um, these fields and these little towns surrounding it, and this drawbridge with this, and the only entrance into the tower is this iron and oak door, uh, which we're heading through now. You can see the colors of House Osgrey on the floor here, uh, this yellow and green, of course, very typical for the Reach, <laughs> as always. Um, got this little audience chamber slash feast hall slash lord's seat. <laughs> they don't have a lot of space, so they do have to have sort of multi-purpose rooms. They do have this really cool hearth here, which I think is quite nice. So before we head up through the castle, I want to take you downstairs, because one of the cool little tidbits of Stanfast is that it's much larger than you think, because it's got these huge vaults carved into the, the bottom of this hill um, that the castle is sitting on. So we've got the kitchens down here, uh, with some blazing hearths and lots of storage room for uh, food and things. We've got some more storage on this next level down as well. We've also got this really cool well, which is uh, built into the cellar of the castle here. So it is sort of their private well, uh, which they use um, in case the castle is under siege, just to have a, uh, access to uh, fresh water. And we keep going down, even further down, and we'll find some uh, some armory here, we'll find some swords and helmets and shields and that kind of stuff. Um, some behind bars locked away, we've got sort of maybe a little treasury for the Osgrays, um, for the remaining wealth that they have. We've also got a little ale cellar, of course, uh, what good castle wouldn't be without its, uh, its supply of ale. Uh, we've got some casks of ale there, so very good. There's that well um, being, or the uh, bucket with fresh water being hoisted up um, through the vaults of this uh, castle here. Right, so heading back up, we're going to head up through the chambers of the knight and uh, his family, um, as well as uh, there's probably going to be a rookery. I did take a little look before, so there is a rookery, so we can look forward to that. Um, but yeah, I just think uh, the way that this castle has been done is uh, it's, it's very nice, very intimate, very detailed. Of course, again, when we have enough canon information to give us details, and we don't really have any excuse to make it look bad, so... <laughs> um, especially since this is a notable location, especially for some of the hardcore fans of A, of a Song of Ice and Fire, and just George R. R. Martin, R. Martin's um, writings in general, we definitely had to put a lot of attention into these uh, into this build. Right, so we've got a little... Uh, a little <laughs> potty chamber here with um, this nice little hole leading out to uh, the outside of the castle, of course. Good for disposing of waste. Um, all kinds of little rooms here. This must be a family room, I bet. I've um, got some nice beds here, as well as some uh, some bookshelves and things. And perhaps for learning, for tutoring the young the young Osgrays. Um, we've got some noble chambers here, it looks like, with a big canopy. Um, shouldn't say noble, actually, since they're just knights, but um, nicer chambers than we'll say. Another canon inf bit of canon information is we've got these arrow slits in the lower floors of the castle here, um, and then the upper floors we've got some windows which are glazed and uh, like here, and um, some shutters as well on the outside. Um, so yeah, so we've, we've kept in mind all the little details that have been mentioned in uh, the the Sword and Sword. 
and so uh, hopefully we've done well. <laughs> um, so yeah, definitely come check it out for yourself, and definitely read read the uh, the tales of Duncan Egg because they're they're one of my favorite um, series of books. And, uh, you know, just in general, not even because they're related to A Song of Ice and Fire, but um, I just love the story of Duncan Egg, and uh, it's got lots of twists and surprises and things that'll inform you about the events of A Song of Ice and Fire, and just, uh, it's one of those little little uh, extra goodies um, to read along um, if you've got nothing better to do, if you've read all the, all the five books that are out right now, and you want to read more. Um, right, so we found our way into the rookery here, thank goodness. <laughs> love good rookery. Um, we've got... Um, some cages here, some water for feeding the ravens, some grain as well here, or corn. And uh, they're built into this little turret, which we saw from the outside, and this other little turret's got some barracks, perhaps, or the bedchamber for a watchman or something like that. And um, it's got this sort of flat roof, which is known to be warped and leaking um, down onto the chambers below, but um, still serves its purpose. Um, so that's basically it. We found our way to the top here. We've got this beautiful forest over here. Um, we just got this beautiful vantage point out over the lands here, which we've called the Sworn Sword Lands, um, which includes uh, the Checky Water, which I said, and uh, Cold Moat, Standfast, uh, Nunny, Dosk, Little Dosk, all which used to be holdings of the Osgrays before their um, before their downfall, shall I say. Um, right, so there's that town we crossed before. You can see those beautiful fields, um, of course, of wheat, and looks like we've got some fallow fields there, maybe some peas or carrots there in the distance. We've also got all these um, fields for grazing, you can see, with the bocage uh, bordering um, all of those fields there. Um, so, yes, and just an excellent area, sort of a really unique um, and yet realistic um, sort of uh, medieval-styled uh, area of Westeros craft um, and on our server. Um, it's something you want to check out, especially if you've seen all of our major locations and you want to see something a little more intimate and a little more, um, I don't know, a little more inspired by the canon. So um, that's it, guys. That's it for episode 40. I hope you enjoyed, and I will see you next time for f episode 41.